All right, I'm here for my picks for week three college football. Um, I put them up yesterday. There was a little error um, on my part. I realize it and want to thank uh, Noel's blogger for catching it. Um, he's a good guy. Check him out. But uh, just to kind of reiterate, from, just go over everything again. Last week um, went eight and two. Improved from week one to seven and three. This week three looks a little bit tougher. There's only a few games that I think are locks. The others, there's a lot that could go either way. So there are going to be different um, various opinions on these picks. Um, but first, where the error came was me explaining one of my videos I made four months ago, the uh, bowl game predictions. Three issues. The first one, my national championship, Oklahoma, Alabama. I guess some people think I'm copying the AP number one and two, but realize even a month before the bowl game predictions, I put up my top 25, where I had Oklahoma 1, Alabama 2. So based on that, I put them in the national championship. So there wasn't anything based on coaches poll, AP poll, nothing like that. It was far before these polls came out. Second issue was the, uh, or I'm just kind of clearing things up with the LSU-West Virginia matchup in the Sugar Bowl. I know it's a rematch. I knew it was a rematch. My thing was LSU getting the at-large bid for the Sugar Bowl. Um, that's clear to understand. The main thing, you know, West Virginia, uh, the rematch one, if it's a good game uh, when they play in their first meeting in West Virginia, people won't mind seeing a rematch in a big game like that. The second and main thing was since the Sugar Bowl is hosting the national championship, they obviously get the top two teams in the nation. Um, so the way it works is they get the last BCS team to participate in those bowl games. They get the last selection. So Big East being universally known as the weakest conference, the weakest automatic qualifying conference, I think West Virginia is going to win that Big East. Sugar Bowl lands them. You know, obviously it could shake up anyway. You know, somebody else could take West Virginia. West Virginia may not win the Big East, but that was my thinking on that um, Sugar Bowl. And here's where the error came, explaining Notre Dame. Um, I think what happened because of my top 25, I have them ranked right about 14. I made the error of saying if they finish in the top 14, they get that automatic berth, which it's not. It's the top eight. And that's where Noel's, uh, Noel's blogger caught it. I appreciate it. Um, but my explanation on that was, or why I have Notre Dame in the BCS, I didn't think they're going to go undefeated, one loss or anything like that. A three-loss Notre Dame team, that's why I had them about number 14. I think that's where I got mixed up in my own head. But uh, I don't think they'll be in the top eight to get that automatic berth. But a, a team finishing number 14 with about nine wins, a BCS team or a BCS bowl game would be glad I would think to have a nine-win Notre Dame team, uh, much, you know, to be improved from last year. Obviously, when I made the video four months ago, that was Notre Dame riding hot off 2010, looking good going into 2011. So obviously, them starting out 0-2 doesn't look that way right now. I think that's where people are coming in saying, how can you have Notre Dame in a BCS bowl game? But I made that video four months ago. Um, so there's that. So again, not top 14 gets them the automatic berth. It's not top 14, it's top 8. I think it's because I had Notre Dame in my top 25 at number 14. That's where the error came. But let's go with the picks. Um, again, ESPN College pick them. Number 10, most confidence, uh, Stanford on the road over U of A. Uh, Stanford looked like they struggled a little bit with Duke, even though they're the far superior team. Uh, Andrew Luck picking up where he left off from 2010. Even without all his, you know, they only returned a few, like four or five offensive starters from last year. U of A may be able to hang around. Um, they're obviously the best team Stanford's faced so far. But U of A's rebuilding their offensive line from last year. Uh, Nick Foles is a great quarterback. Uh, Kreiner is a great receiver. Probably one of the best combinations in the Pac-12 there, quarterback-receiver. I think Stanford is just too much for U of A to handle, even on their own field. Number nine, South Carolina at home over Navy. Navy one-dimensional run team. South Carolina is going to have to get more physical in the trenches. They're highly athletic there, but they just need to get more physical. Um, they were completely outplayed by Georgia last week in every aspect of the game, except for the big plays, which got South Carolina the win. I know the win's all that matter. 
but they were outplayed by Georgia. They escaped late. Obviously, the big plays, punt return for or fake punt for a touchdown, interception for a touchdown, fumble recover for a touchdown. That's you know that, that got them the win. But they're going to have to pick up their level of play here before they dive deep into the SEC play. Uh, my eight pick, Nebraska at home over Washington. This is their third meeting um, this year and two last year. Rematch in the Holiday Bowl. The Washington shocked a lot of people. This game being in Nebraska, I think Nebraska is going to be too much. Um, obviously, you know, Washington has looked good this year. Um, this is going to be their toughest challenge. Keith Price has looked amazing this season. You know, seven touchdowns, one pick. A lot of people think he's going to be better than Jake Locker. Uh, this is this is the test. This is a chance for him to prove it. But I think the defensive talent for Nebraska, Alfonso Denard at corner, Jared Crick there on the line, going to be too much for Washington. Um, Taylor Martinez, at times he can look like top 10 player in college football, other times not. I know he had that uh, lingering injury from last year. But I just think Nebraska is going to be uh, too much for Washington. Now here's where the picks can start going either way. Um, my seven pick, Texas over UCLA. Last year, UCLA went into Texas, embarrassed the Longhorns. This year, it's in L.A. Texas last week against BYU. Uh, it took the benching of Garrett Gilbert and putting in McCoy and Ash at quarterback, that rotation, to make them. They look like a completely different team. Ash brings a lot of versatility to the offense. McCoy, um, more of the thrower, hooking up with Shipley there. Looking like a few years ago at Texas, the McCoy-Shipley connection. But the team's completely different with Garrett Gilbert on the sideline. They have the defense. UCLA still looking one-dimensional. Can't find their rhythm at quarterback. It'll be close, but I like Texas. Um, now six, Auburn over Clemson. Again, another rematch from last year that went into overtime. Overtimes. Uh, Auburn <laughs> shocked a lot of people beating Mississippi State. It was a close game. They're showing, you know, why they're the defending national champions. People have to respect them. Uh, Clemson, another one of those inconsistent teams from the ACC. Uh, they do have a really good back, Andre Ellington. There's going to be two good backs facing each other, you know, Ellington and, of course, Michael Dyer from Auburn. Should be a good game. I like Auburn, though. On the road, it's going to be their first road test this year. Death Valley's a... Um, tough place for anybody to play but I like Auburn now five the big game of the weekend um, Oklahoma over Florida State Florida State it is in Tallahassee that's one big thing they have going for them they're a young team I just like Oklahoma's overall individual level of play um, with their experience Landry Jones to Ryan Broyles one of the best connections in the nation um, Florida State very fast can keep up with Oklahoma one Probably the best secondary unit in the nation. Very talented. Um, present a challenge to any quarterback. But uh, a, in a close game, I like Oklahoma on the road. It's not going to be a 30-point blowout like it was last year. But I like Oklahoma with the five confidence. Um, four, this one could be lower just because Iowa disappointed me last week. Um, losing that rivalry game on the road to Iowa State. Three overtimes. Facing Pitt. I like Iowa because they're at home looking to rebound from last year. Um, I think they're a more they, well, the more physical team. Pittsburgh does have a strong run game. But uh, not too familiar with either one of these teams too much right now. But I like Iowa at home over Pitt with a four. Now my three, um, the Holy War, BYU over Utah. The game is at BYU. Jay Keeps and the Cougars have had two very tough tests and this is another tough one you know they escaped on the road against Ole Miss uh, they lost it second half to Texas last week uh, Jay Keeps and his 10 returning or nine other returning stars on offense they haven't really looked like they hit their stride but you know coming off two very tough teams with Texas and Ole Miss hopefully they can they're gonna need to find it against Utah because Utah will be capable of knocking them off uh, Utah, lose their only loss coming to USC, which they played very tough. Uh, that came down to the last drive for Utah. But I still like Jake Heaps and that offense to hopefully hit their stride this week. One of my teams on the rise for 2011. 
Now my uh, two pick, Ohio State over Miami. Uh, Miami, I like Stephen Morris at quarterback. The guy's very talented. Skill-wise, he's got a little ways to go mentally. Um, but Lamar Miller, very strong runner in between the tackles for Miami. It's going to be, uh, I think Ohio State may be surprised a little bit. Hopefully Miami can attack them a little more physically in the trenches. Uh, Ohio State does get a few players returning back from suspension. Um, Ohio State in the past, I think they are going to be able to run the ball against Miami, but if they want to attack the field, um, attack the middle of the middle of the field against Miami, that's what Maryland did um, in Miami's very first game. The middle of the field was wide open. I think hit the tight ends over the middle, run some uh, crossing routes through the middle of the field. I think they can uh, exploit the Miami defense. But uh, I like Ohio State with the confidence of two. Now my one confidence, you look at this game, right away you think Michigan State. But I'm going with Notre Dame. I don't think this team can afford to. They got their backs against the wall. You know, going 0-3 is going to cancel any shot they have at a BCS. Um, the game is in uh, South Bend. Notre Dame's improved each week. Um, you know, you can say they outplayed South Florida. Turnovers did them in. They let Michigan hang around last week in one of the greatest college football games I've seen. Obviously came back to bite them. Denard Robinson made things happen. Uh, but I like Notre Dame. Tyler Reese looking looking better. He looked good last week. Um, Michael Floyd, an amazing wide receiver. For Michigan State, they've got one of the best leaders in college football, Kirk Cousins. A balanced run attack with Edwin Baker, uh, Le'Veon Bell. Those guys will touch the ball the same amount of time to get the same amount of yards. It's going to be the most physical team Notre Dame's faced this year. But Notre Dame, their front seven defensively is playing a lot better. It's their secondary that's susceptible. Whereas with Michigan State, if you get beat, you're going to get beat in the run game. Um, so I like Notre Dame in this. The only reason I'm picking them is because they're 0-2. I don't think they can afford to go. You know, it's one of those teams with their back against the wall. They're going to come out and fight everything they have. They're going to need to. Um, a couple games I'm surprised that weren't on here. Uh, Tennessee and Florida for this Saturday. Um, that's an, another game that could be tossed up. I'm going to have to take Tennessee. Uh, they're one of my teams on the rise. They are looking very good this year. Uh, Florida, not a, I mean, they look you know undefeated as well. Um, but I, that's going to be a great matchup. I like Tennessee with Tyler Bray and that young, talented team. Now another team or another game that's not on there, um, Arizona State at Illinois. Arizona State coming off the huge victory against Missouri. Um, I like Arizona State on the road. The only reason I think they lose is from a letdown game coming off that big win against Missouri. Um, Illinois, another very physical team from the Big Ten. Uh, Shieldhouse knows how to run that option, option attack, but. ASU, very fast team, special teams, helps them out a lot. Jamal Miles returning kicks. Um, Brock Osweiler, a quarterback, very deceivingly mobile. He can get out of the pocket, make things happen. He spreads the ball around to all his targets. The front seven of ASU defensively, um, best in the Pac-12, one of the best in the nation, Junior Agnelli, an outstanding young talent, one of the most underrated players in the nation. Um, he's good, strong against the run and can get after the passer. Of course, their linebacking core, headlined by Vontez Perfect. Um, best linebacker in the nation, most physical, hardest-hitting guy in the nation. If he meets you, he's done. He does play over-aggressive at times where he can miss overrun plays. But uh, he, he can fight through traffic. He oftentimes beats blocks to meet the play. Um, I like ASU on the road. I think this is ASU's year in the Pac-12. Going to win the Pac-12 South. So there's the picks. Two extra bonus picks, not on the pick'em. But there they are for week three. All right.